Hello everyone, I'm Sheldon with IT Computer Repair and today I'm going to be doing a quick walkthrough on how to troubleshoot the first generation 100D Chromebook. Okay, so this is the 100D Chromebook that we have here. Keep in mind this is also a first generation Chromebook. Um, the way you can tell that is if the dark Lenovo font over here, it will also say it on the back plate. Uh, I've already removed the back plate off of this particular one just to make it a lot simpler so when I'm showing you guys the inside of it. Um, the second generation 100D Chromebooks will have uh, the Lenovo logo right here, but that will be in a white font. So it's pretty easy to tell. They also have a different design change and on the back plate as well it will say Gen 2. So uh, these uh, walkthrough and diagnosing this device will work uh, with the 100D second gen as well. So if you want to be able to troubleshoot those devices, you can do that uh, at the same time. But we're mainly focusing on the first generation today because these are the ones that are having the most issues in the district. So when I first get a device, uh, this will have it here. Um, I'll, my first thing to do is do a quick visual inspection of the device, make sure there's no physical damage because automatically if there's any physical damage on the device, uh, that's going to change the game completely on how I'm looking at it and also too if I'm going to have to uh, charge for the repair or not because currently right now uh, as of the making of this video we are covering uh, failed motherboards on these devices that are having the power issues so if there is any sort of physical damage to the device it will not classify or uh, work under that uh, fix on failure issue. So. Um, looking at this device already, um, the only things I noticed on the top is just there's a slight paint and whatnot. There's no like obvious like dents or dings to the lid of the device. Um, going along the side here, um, I've already looked at the ports, but uh, there is no physical damage on the inside. Uh, both USB ports, the USB-C on this side, uh, full-size USB doesn't have any damage. Uh, neither does the micro SD slot and the headphone jack as well. And then going around to the other side of the device, the full-size USB port and the other USB-C port as well don't have any damage, so that's a good sign already. Um, so, so far this device should be classified. If it does end up having a failed motherboard, uh, we should be able to cover it under the FOF. Uh, fix on failure is what that stands for. So, flipping the device over, um, I've already, like I said, taken the back plate off, but you'll want to remove the back plate. And uh, what I'll do is I'll look over the device, make sure uh, that there's no cables disconnected. A very common issue on these particular models, the first generation, we haven't seen this on the second generation yet, uh, knock on wood, is uh, this ribbon cable right here that goes in the L shape. Uh, this cable, this connector right here, um, sometimes the uh, ribbon cable connector will be open just like that. You'll open up the device, that's usually the first thing I will check. And then uh, it could be even just completely out like that very obviously. So, so a lot of the times uh, the issues that we have with the 100Es you can just reconnect that cable and put the device back together and you're usually good. I'd recommend testing it, of course, before you put the device back together. Uh, but usually the issues that this will cause is the backlight will come on and off and you're only able to reset the device. That's usually 99% of the time uh, it's that cable's disconnected. So if you send me a message or I see any tickets that come in usually that have that is the problem description, I'll usually send them a message and say to check that cable and most of the time that ends up being the fix. So another thing too, once I open up the device, I'll make sure that there's no obvious like water damage or moisture damage. Uh, the nice thing is, is the inside of the device will hide any of that kind of stuff. Even if someone tries to clean the heck out of the out, um, outside of the device, it will show telltale signs of it on the inside. If there's corrosion or anything like that, no matter what kind of liquid's been in the device, you'll be able to see it uh, just by doing a quick visual inspection. Sometimes you might have to remove the motherboard to be able to figure that out, but since we're going to be doing that anyways, most likely, uh, you'll be able to see if there's any moisture under there, saying that maybe they did open the device and try to clean it a little bit. but. Um, Right, even just looking at this, I can already tell that there hasn't been any moisture damage because usually the metal parts will show that there's been moisture in there. So um, next thing I'll try to do, um, and maybe even before you open it up, you can plug it in. Uh, personally, I wait until I have the device open and uh, looking at it and whatnot. I'll leave the battery connected, everything connected. The only thing I did was take off the back plate of this device uh, and then I'll connect the USB-C charger. It doesn't matter which port you plug it into. If you want to plug it into the USB-C port that's on the motherboard, that works. Or you can plug it into the USB-C connector that's on the subboard as well. Uh, either one works, like I said. So they're able to charge through both ports and I'll get into later. You can also send data through them as well. So uh, plugging it in, there is no sign of life, and if I'm being quiet here, I can't hear any noises coming from the device as well. Um, even with the battery connected, you should be able to hear a little bit of electrical whine. Um, so that is not a good sign in terms of 
this motherboard being savable um, already off the bat, but we still have a lot of things to go over to make sure that that's 100% the issue. So, uh, like I said, there is zero power light coming from the motherboard, so, all right, so we can unplug that here. So the next thing I'll do then is I will disconnect the uh, power cable for the uh, battery. It's really easy to just remove there, and I'll just leave it hanging there like that, and then I will plug the device in as well. And again, there is absolutely no life. And a big thing too with the 100Es is when the battery is disconnected, the motherboards will make a loud hissing noise. Um, so the fact that it's not even doing that, sometimes we'll have them where they don't even have the power light and there's no hissing noise whatsoever coming from the device. Um, this should be making some sort of a hissing noise and it's not even doing that. So it's already, like I said, I'm pretty confident saying that this motherboard is dead at this point, uh, but it's very likely too that uh, there could be a short somewhere else in the system. So uh, the next thing to do is gonna be to completely remove the motherboard and then from there we will test it. So I'm gonna remove this motherboard real quick and then uh, we'll pick up uh, once I have it out. Okay, so I have all the screws out on the motherboard now, so we're gonna take it out of the whole entire case of the system. So you just lift up the back end of it once everything's disconnected, and if you forgot anything, you'll be able to see because there'll be any tension on those cables or the screws as well. So uh, there's usually two pins here. This one is actually missing, uh, but you can just pull up the device, <clears throat> sorry, and just lift it up, and then usually you'll just be able to slide it out like that. This one, like I said, is a little bit easier since the little pin that holds this motherboard in was there. So uh, having the motherboard out, then I can put the system aside just for now. And another note too, when you're taking out the screws on the motherboard, the screw that holds in the wireless card is slightly smaller than all the other ones that hold in the motherboard. So make sure you keep that one separate from the other that hold in the motherboard. And then you'll have the bracket as well that goes over the USB connectors as well for the ground. So having the motherboard out now, um, next thing I'll do too is do a quick visual inspection, especially being out of the system. Uh, you can see a lot more here. And then the other thing as well, you can see the other side, the back side of it with the heat sink and everything. Uh, and like I said, if there's any moisture or damage or anything, you'll be able to see that as well. Shining it in the light and whatnot, you can easily see if there's any like lines where water's been or milk or anything like that. Uh, it will show on the device and the best place to hide it and preserve it will be on the back side of the motherboard. And again, this one's a good sign. There's no sign of liquid or moisture damage whatsoever to this motherboard. So. Um, and also too, I'm not seeing any physical damage. So make sure you do look over every component as much as you can. Uh, if you have a magnifying glass too, take a look at those USB-C ports or all the ports again. Uh, it's a lot easier too once the board's out of the system. Uh, just to verify that there wasn't any foul play or issues with the device beforehand. Uh, we wanna make sure that these motherboards are being checked over and that there's no physical device, or physical damage, sorry, um, because again, it won't be covered under our FOF uh, terms of service. So uh, right here, so I'll plug in the power. Um, I'm not gonna connect any subboard or anything yet. I wanna make sure that there's any life whatsoever coming from this motherboard. The motherboard on its own will not power up and display to a monitor unless the subboard is connected to uh, the motherboard. This is a first generation um, thing with this device. If you do have a second generation device, if you have the subboard disconnected, you will be able to get display uh, to an external monitor depending on the adapter that you use, um, which we'll get into as well. But first thing here I wanna check to make sure is that there's actually even any life from the system, so. All right, so that's a actually a big deal right there. So connecting in that power cable, we actually get a light from the system now. Uh, we weren't getting that before when it was just in the case and even having the battery disconnected. So right now what I can tell is, okay, there's possibility that there's life in this motherboard. It is also very possible that there is no life in this motherboard. Um, with the 100E first generations, usually when the light's on, that's a really good sign. Um, second gen's not so much. The lights don't really tell you anything. Um, but we've definitely had a few 100E motherboards, first generations, where the lights, power light's on. That doesn't 100% mean that the motherboard's good or not. So we'll get into that now. So I'm going to disconnect it again. I'll plug it. <clears throat> and the next thing I'm going to do is try to get it to display on a secondary monitor. So. I have a known good subboard here. This is not the one that is in the system. The one that is in the system is still in there. So I want to eliminate any other issues that the device may have. And it's very likely that the subboard in that system is bad uh, or it's some other component <clears throat> that's causing the motherboard not to boot. So 
We'll connect this one here just outside of the system. And you need to make sure that both ribbon cables are connected because depending on how you have it set up, uh, this silver cable here is actually what provides power through the USB-C port into the motherboard. So you need to make sure you have both connected or else it will not work. So that's how I'll have it set up. And then uh, we have a dongle over here and this is what I'll connect to the um, subboard. It does not matter which USB-C port you connect it to. Um, if you connect the power here and the this dongle uh, going to your uh, monitor over here, that works. If you want to flip around, what, just depending on your setup, if you have cables either way, uh, either way works. Uh, I prefer to just connect it to the subboard for the video, and then I do the power through the motherboard. That's just the way I usually always do it. Um, like I said, it does not matter though either way. So connecting it here like that, I'll connect the display connector first, and then I will proceed to connect the power. And that's a good sign as well. Got the light still flashing there. So right now I'm looking at the monitor to see if anything boots. It's making hissing noises. I don't know if you guys are able to hear that. And we have display on the monitor. So, okay, so it's looking like we do have life in this motherboard. But again, even once all these steps are complete, that doesn't mean 100% that the motherboard is completely good. Um, the next thing is going to be to check, to figure out which component inside that system is causing this motherboard to not work. So um, I will disconnect the power first here and disconnect the dongle here. Set that off to the side. Okay, so Next thing would be is now since we know that it boots on an external monitor, the two issues we could be having um, that would render this motherboard still dead um, or needing to be replaced is if the <clears throat> display port out for the uh, LCD cable, um, LCD on the Chromebook is bad, which is this connector right here. Uh, we've had that as well where the motherboard works totally fine, but that uh, output connector does not work whatsoever. And even with a replacement cable or a replacement screen, uh, we get no life from it. I do not have a test screen or a cable here, so I won't be able to test that. Uh, but that's, that would be the next thing I would do is if you have a known good LCD and a known good 100E uh, first generation or second gen cable, they both work on this model. Um, check that to see and then do exactly what I did. Just connect the power. Um, you don't need to connect the secondary display but just connect the power, make sure the subboard's connected and see if anything comes up on that display. Um, so since I don't have that, uh, my next thing is going to be is disconnect the subboard from this. And this is the no good subboard again, like I said, just put that aside. And uh, we're gonna try putting the motherboard back in the system and we're just gonna reassemble one thing at a time. Um, another th issue that this device could be having is um, a shorting issue that we've been having on the 100Ds, which is most of the time what kills them. It's an issue with the heat sink where they actually cut through the solders um, or the traces on the motherboard, excuse me, and uh, will short out the system. So it's most, it's very possible that when the system is, or the motherboard is installed into the case, it's causing pressure along the top and causing pressure on the traces, which in theory is killing the motherboard. So uh, by doing this, we'll be able to determine if that's the issue and uh, I'll get into it as well later whether or not, um, or how you can actually test that theory to make sure that that's what's causing it. So um, I will put one thing in here at a time. So make sure all the cables are out of the way and everything. And then we're just gonna reassemble one piece at a time to make sure that we can figure out what inside this system is killing the motherboard or preventing the motherboard from getting any power whatsoever. So, um, so I have it in here like this. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is the subboard. So I'm not gonna connect everything else. Make sure that every other connector is out of the way so you're not having anything shorting out or anything like that. Um, even if you wanted to, you could put some scotch tape down on other things to make sure they're not lining up. And again, just quickly looking at everything to make sure there's no physical damage once over again. So make sure you connect both subboard cables. And then I'm gonna make sure every other connector is out of the way. I'm actually gonna tuck them underneath the motherboard to make sure they're not making contact with any of their connectors. So right now I just have the motherboard and the subboard connected. The subboard is screwed down, the motherboard is not. So um, I'm gonna do exactly what I did earlier and connect the adapter into the subboard for the display. And then I'm gonna connect power to the motherboard as well. And we do have a power light still, so we'll see if anything comes up on the display in a second. 
and if anything comes up on the display, that means we can eliminate the subboard from being an issue. And it also eliminates the ribbon cables as well being an issue as well, because you could have a good subboard, but if the cables are damaged whatsoever, uh, you're not gonna have any luck at all. Uh, and usually in that case, we'll just replace the entire subboard and cables as well, so. It booted up on the other monitor just fine, so that's a good sign. We can say confidently that the subboard for this device is good. So I'll disconnect the power there and also disconnect the subboard again. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is connect the wireless card. And I will screw that down again. Make sure you have the separate screw for the wireless card as well. Again, just one component at a time. Don't jump ahead of yourself and start connecting everything. Uh, we want to make sure it's, it, we've had it on these. It's, it could be one of everything. It could be the battery, it could be the keyboard. Uh, most of the time I've seen it's an issue with the LCD, LCD cable is causing the short or something with the battery or the subboard. So those are the most common things. I have not had any issues with the speakers or wireless card or trackpad yet, but that's not to say that it won't happen. So I'm gonna connect this again with the wireless card installed. Then I forgot to connect this subboard connector as well, but even if you forget to connect it, you can connect it after the fact and it will still display something, so. Okay, so we're still getting output to the other monitor. So another thing to check, so since I don't have that test monitor or anything out right now, um, I'm gonna see if I can pre apply pressure anywhere up to the top of the motherboard here and see if I can get the system to shut off. On these 100 first generations, the short points tend to be up here at the top of the keyboard. So applying pressure here will usually either trip the power connector if there is an issue with the traces or that grounding issue, like I said. Um, this one doesn't seem like it's doing that, so that's a good sign as well. So I'm gonna disconnect the power and the subboard as well again, uh, or the dongle. You actually don't really need to disconnect it. I just do it to be sure. Um, and the next thing I'm gonna connect is going to be, it doesn't really matter what order you do this stuff in, um, I'm just gonna do it on what's most likely the cause. So um, I don't wanna do the battery. Battery I will do last. So I'm gonna connect the keyboard and see if we're having any issues there. So my hunch is, is it's an issue with the keyboard or the screen or screen cable. So keyboard's connected, not the trackpad, just the keyboard. Connect the display adapter first and then connect the power. Okay, so we still have light, and we'll see if it displays on the monitor still. Okay, so we have life on the monitor. Leave that connected, actually. So next thing is gonna be the LCD cable. No light, so, all right. <clears throat> so we're not getting any light from there, so that's a very telltale sign that there is an issue with the LCD cable. Um, then what I'll do is I'll disconnect it again, plug it back in to verify that, and also make sure it didn't permanently kill the motherboard as well in that process. So, nope, we have light from it. We have noise as well, and we'll see if it's actually gonna display anything to the monitor. Yep, so we're getting life to the monitor. So um, we've narrowed it down to that. There's still likelihood there could be an issue with the battery or the speakers, but the likelihood of that, it's very unlikely that there's an issue with that. And even if that's the case, then that's saying you could just replace the battery uh, or the speakers, so um, or the trackpad as well. So I'm gonna attach the trackpad, just verify that that's not causing any issues. I'm gonna leave the battery disconnected. I will connect the speakers as well. Okay, so we got life on the monitor. Okay, so I'm pretty confident saying it's something with the, like said, screen or screen cable. So what we'll do is I'm gonna put a few screws in the motherboard here and then uh, flip the system back over and pop off the LCD cover real quick and see if there is an issue there. So uh, usually for this, you can just connect, just make sure there's the screw in the wireless card already. So that's already holding down the other end of the motherboard. 
I usually just put in one screw over here on this bracket and with all the other connectors put into, uh, that's gonna hold the motherboard in more than fine uh, to be able to flip it over and test uh, or pop off the LCD. So opening it over here, I'm just gonna pop this. And already I can tell that this LCD bezel, there's something going on because just by opening that device, I can tell that this is loose. So I'm gonna pop that off real quick. I should not be able to just do this by hand that easy. So uh, you should be having to use one of these spludgers to be able to get in there and remove this LCD cover. And yeah, this is way too easy to remove right there. So setting that off to the side and doing a quick visual inspection of the inside. Um, I'm not seeing anything. A very common um, mistake that people make when replacing the screens on the 100E uh, first generation, um, I can't remember the routing on the second generation, I believe it is the exact same though as well, is that this LCD cable needs to be routed below this clip right here. Uh, it's very easy to think that that is a trace or a path for the LCD cable to follow and a lot of the times it will follow that and uh, what happens is once the bezel is on it will clip over that cable and actually short it out and it's very possible it will kill the motherboard, it will kill the LCD, it will kill whatever it wants to kill depending on how bad the short is and uh, that's another thing we will look for in seeing okay is that classified or will it be under the FOF and uh, that will not because that will be something someone repaired the screen improperly which resulted in the death of the motherboard and uh, it will not be covered under the extended warranty uh, for the motherboards because it's not a power issue so um, don't see that which I'm actually surprised that's what I was thinking was going to be causing this cable or maybe it has killed the cable um, so now what I'm thinking is that there is possibly an issue with the LCD and then if not um, it's looking like there might be still an issue with the cable so what I'll do is I'll remove the screen um, and check to see if it boots I'm not going to do it here for you guys but what I would do is I would remove the screen and uh, connect the cable just have the cable laying here um, and then connect it to the ex external monitor as well see if anything comes up on the external monitor with just the cable plugged in if that's the case and the light comes on as well then that means the LCD cable is most likely good and then if you have a good or a known good LCD monitor um, a 30 pin screen connect that and see if you get any light from it um, and then you're pretty much you can confirm that it's the screen and then what I would do is from there I would fully dis fully assemble the device and I'm going to close this here actually real quick um, so like I said we connected most of the parts in here as well and just make sure you put it out of the screws together. Sometimes what I'll do is I'm, if I'm really not sure what the issue is on the device or I'm still want to be sure that there's not another issue, um, I will leave the device open like this. And while it is on, I will actually start putting the screws in, but make sure you're being very careful about that um, because if you drop a screw or you hit your screwdriver somewhere, you could short the motherboard out. Um, I have a nice magnetic screwdriver though, so I make sure that I'm getting that those screws in the right places. Um, because we can have that as well too, being 100 e first gen, um, where one screw is causing pressure on a certain point and shorting out the motherboard. So through that, those steps, uh, you should be able to determine if the motherboard is bad or not. Currently, right now, as the making of this video, we're having all 100 e devices being sent in to Quail to be repaired. Uh, so if you do these steps and you determine that the motherboard is indeed bad, uh, please send that device in to Quail to be fixed. Uh, if you have any questions with that as well, please let me know. Um, we're more than happy to walk through. Uh, but until everyone's more confident with uh, diagnosing and repairing these devices, uh, we aren't sending out any motherboards or anything to CyberCruise for repairs. So just, uh, again, please let us know. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'll feel more free, more than happy to answer them as well. Thank you everyone for watching our walkthrough on how to troubleshoot a 100E first generation uh, Chromebook. Again, if you have any questions, please send me an email. Uh, you can also get a hold of me on Teams. I try to be on there as much as possible. Uh, I really want to just try and make sure we're troubleshooting and making sure these devices are repaired. So again, don't feel like it, anything, any question is stupid. We all know how fun these devices are. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much and have a nice day.